वेलकम डियर फ्रेंड्स अगेन टू माय चैनल योर टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग कंसल्टेंसी टिप्स टुडे इन दिस ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ लेक्चर ऑफ माय सीरीज आई वुड बी कवरिंग द सब्जेक्ट टॉपिक पाइल फाउंडेशन एंड इट्स रिलेटेड टर्मिनोलॉजी आई एम शोइंग यू ऑन द फर्स्ट स्लाइड ऑफ माय लेक्चर द इमेज ऑफ under in piles and state board cars in situ concrete piles which are generally being used for lot many structures the type of the pile the depth and the diameter of the pile etc along with the cut off level are usually decided depending upon for which kind of structure we are going to build these piles what is the water table position out there what is the kind of stratigraphy there whether we are going to provide these foundations for buildings overhead tanks transmission line towers bridges or whatsoever the structure may be now i will be covering the related terms which are very much required to be known by all of us all the civil engineers concerned in the industry which we should be knowing about now the piles find application in foundations in order to transfer the loads from the structure to a competent subsurface strata having adequate load bearing capacity in general each individual pile have a have its own independent load carrying capacity and the pile foundations are usually given in a group may it be a four pile group five pile group six pile group or eight pile group depending upon the load requirements of the superstructure for which we are deciding on them on spacing for buildings for piers etc what does the piles do piles transfer axial loads either by friction along its shaft or by end bearing although it's basically a combination of both of them together in real terms the choice of pile foundations is usually decided depending upon subsoil stratification at that very particular site for the respective structure for which the pile foundations are to be provided construction of pile foundations require such a piling system that suits or is really feasible depending upon the existing subsoil conditions the load characteristics of our structure the design load requirements of that structure subject to the condition that it does fulfill the limitations of total settlement differential settlement if any or any angular distortion and any other special requirement for that very particular respective project the installations of piles demand very careful control on position alignment and depth as well as we have to use a specialized skill and experience because we have to strictly follow with the layout plan because the number of piles under each column for buildings or under each pier for bridges etc are designed and decided taking into consideration the stability requirements as well as the longevity of the structure so that the structure remains safe for its design life period now <clears throat> under in piles are basically board cast in situ or board compaction types having one or more bulbs 
formed by suitably enlarging the bore hole for the pie shaft now what does actually the bulb or under under him do it substantially increases the bearing and provides sufficient enough anchorage to the foundation it easily the, the under him pile foundations easily counter the undesirable effect of seasonal moisture changes as in expensive soils like black cotton soils which i have already discussed in one of my previous lectures they are provided in a way so as to reach the competent bearing strata that is all in all they help us obtain adequate capacity for downward upward and lateral load requirement requirements and movement requirements fulfilling them as per the structural needs and they should be taken to those very foundation levels which are below the scour level or liquefiable strata if any found to be at the site now the straight bolt cast in situ pile is basically formed within the ground by excavating or boring a hole with or without a temporary casing to keep the bore hole stabilized and if it is a clay soil we usually do not have to use bentonite but if it's sandy soil under water we have to use bentonite for its stabilization during its <coughs> concreting work and subsequently we fill it fill those bore holes with plain or reinforced concrete usually it is being done by reinforced concrete now these piles are particularly applicable in certain subsoil conditions where penetration that is the <coughs> its termination level that is its toe is predetermined as per the design load requirements whichever is essential whatsoever is essential for that very particular project their diameter length and cut off levels etc are decided based on the kind of the structure to be built at the site it also depends upon the stratigraphy at the site the water table situation at the site and its design load requirements now coming over to the important terminology and other terms which are used in pile foundations which we all must know is the allowable load what is the allowable load it is the load which may be applied to a pile after taking into account its ultimate load capacity group effect the allowable settlement the permissible allowable settlement negative skin friction down drag etc and other relevant loading conditions now anchor pile an anchor pile means a pile meant for resisting pull or uplift forces batter pile raker pile any pile when installed at an angle to the vertical using temporary casing or permanent liner is usually known and referred to as batter pile bolt cast in situ pile i have already defined it earlier a pile formed by boring a hole in the ground by percussive or rotary method with the use of temporary permanent casing or drilling mud the bentonite which i just explained you in my previous slide and then subsequently filling the hole with reinforced concrete bolt compaction pile under rim pile i have uh, already discussed in my previous slides now bolt compaction pile a bolt cast in situ pile with or without bulbs in which the reinforcement cage is driven by suitable method in freshly filled concrete in the bore if the pile is with bulbs it is known as under rim bolt compaction pile this is how we define the bolt compaction pile now the cut off level it is the level where a pile is cut off to support the pile caps or beams or any other structural components above it and above the ground at that very particular level it's usually related with the diameter of the pile but in certain cases it's being decided by the structural engineer concerned as per the situation and the requisition of that very particular structure where the pile foundations are being given provided now the diameter of piles the latest code indian standard code suggests 
अंडर एम फाइव डायमीटर्स टू बी रेंजिंग फ्रॉम टू हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एम एम टू फाइव हंड्रेड एम एम इट्स थ्री हंड्रेड एम एम थ्री हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव एम एम फोर हंड्रेड एम एम फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एम एम एंड फाइव हंड्रेड एम एम बट द लेटेस्ट कोड ऑफ वर्ल्ड क्लास इन सी टू फाइल्स डिफाइन फाइल्स ऑफ सिक्स हंड्रेड एम एम और लेस इन डायमीटर एंड स्मॉल डायमीटर फाइल्स वाइल फाइल्स ग्रेटर दैन सिक्स हंड्रेड एम एम डायमीटर आर कॉल्ड लार्ज डायमीटर फाइल्स मिनिमम फाइल डायमीटर रिकमेंडेड इज फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी एम एम इन दीज वेरी केसेज मे बी इन माई फ्यूचर लेक्चर्स आई विल बी रेफरिंग यू विद दीज वेरी पर्टिकुलर इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड कोड नंबर्स ईयर्स एंड देर लेटेस्ट री एफ एम ईयर्स एट्सेट्रा ऑल्सो एज वेल Now, what is the elastic displacement of a pile? This is the magnitude of displacement of the pile head during rebound or removal after a given test load has been implied on it, and it comprises of essentially two components: the elastic displacement of the soil participating in the load transfer, and the elastic displacement of the pile shaft. Now, what is the factor of safety in reference to pile foundations? It is the ratio of the ultimate load capacity of a pile to the safe load on the pile. What is the gross displacement? The total movement of pile top under a given load is gross displacement. Now, basically, in compression, we do. Test pile for initial load test or for uh, say we do it uh, as routine pile load test also. So what is initial load test? A test pile when tested to determine the load carrying capacity of the pile by loading either to its ultimate load or to twice the estimated safe load. Over and above, हम जब pile load initial load test करते हैं तो 25 percent extra cartridge भी लगाते हैं. and that is how we do the <coughs> initial load test <coughs> but these initial load tests are usually test are done on initial test piles <coughs> which are not at all a working pile rather to say they are being installed for, for this very pur- specific purpose of ascertaining the load carrying capacity of it such piles are tested either to test either to know their ultimate load capacity that is to find before uh, starting any construction activity on pile foundations for any structure ki hamari pile ki actual load carrying capacity kya hai such piles are tested either to test their ultimate load capacity and are done usually to the twice the estimated safe load now what is load bearing pile <coughs> i have already mentioned before that the piles पाइल फाउंडेशन जो होती हैं या तो स्किन शार्फ रेजिस्टेंस के थ्रू एंड बियरिंग के थ्रू अपना लोड बियर करती हैं तो अ पाइल फॉर्म इन द ग्राउंड फॉर ट्रांसमिटिंग द लोड ऑफ अ स्ट्रक्चर टू द सॉइल बाय द रेजिस्टेंस डेवलप एट इट स्टेप और अलॉन्ग इट सर्फेस विच आई हैव ऑलरेडी जस्ट नो इनफॉर्म यू इट मे बी फॉर्म इधर वर्टिकली और एट एन इंक्लिनेशन बेटर पाइल एंड मे बी रिक्वायर टू रेज सेपरेट प्रोसेस तो इफ द पाइल सपोर्ट द लोड प्राइमरली बाई रेजिस्टेंस डेवलप्ड एट इट्स टिप पाइल टिप all through its base it is called end bearing pile and if primarily by friction that is the along its surface shaft then it is termed as friction pile although it is basically a combination of both in reality now multi end bearing pile as the term is uh, self explanatory an end bearing pile having more than one bulb is generally term del multi end bearing pile if it is having two bulbs it is known as double end bearing pile if it is if it is having more than two bulbs it is basically termed as multi end bearing pile now net displacement the net vertical movement of the pile top after the pile has been subjected to a test load and subsequently released pile is spacing is base it's basically the center to center distance between adjacent piles in any pile load routine load test a working pile when subjected a working pile that is the pile which is to be the constituent part of the foundation is basically tested for a test load up to 1 and 1/2 times the safe load plus 25% extra cartridge 
now routine test pile whatsoever pile we test for routine load test in compression it's basically is basically referred to as routine test pile which is selected for load testing and may form a working pile itself which i have already just mentioned you and is subjected to routine load test up to one or one and a half times the safe load plus cantrage cantrage of 25 percent now what is safe load it is the load derived by applying a factor of safety on the ultimate load capacity of the pile or as determined from load test what is ultimate load capacity the maximum load which a pile can carry before failure that is when the founding start of fails by shear as evidence from the load settlement curve or the pile fails as a structural member is the ultimate load capacity what is the working load the load assigned to a pile as per design requirements working pile a pile forming part of the foundation system of a given structure so friends i think i have tried to cover all very important relevant terms and terminologies and other uh, things which we one should know before entering into pile foundation chapters i would be covering few more lectures on pile foundations in future hope you must have enjoyed watching this video of mine please watch share and subscribe to my channel namaskar thank you for watching and patiently hearing me you can find me on linkedin at this very particular url id and keep on watching my videos on the subject topic geotechnical engineering consultancy tips at my youtube channel link which i am showing you you can find me on youtube by my name also as anurag kapoor and for any further suggestions etc you can contact me at my mail id anurag kapoor 16@gmail.com and or anurag kapoor 16@yahoo.co.in thank you thank you for watching my video keep on subscribing to my channel